Agriculture is the mainstay of Uganda's economy and provides sustenance and livelihoods for 73% of the population. The sector contributed 23.7% of the national gross domestic product during the financial year of 2020-2021. It is the main source of raw materials for Uganda's industry and manufacturing. It contributed about 44% to our country's total exports. It is also the mainstay for most of Uganda's small-scale and medium-scale processing enterprises and activities and a Vision 2040, which is the blueprint for uplifting the livelihoods and quality of life of Ugandans, the government envisions agriculture as the main vehicle to achieve these goals. Vision 2040 is implemented through national development plans. So far, the country has completed the implementation of NDP-1 and NDP-2. The government began the implementation of NDP-3 in 2020. It seeks to consolidate and build on investments in production and productivity by promoting the program-based approach to implementation of government programs in the next five years. The agro-industrialization program is going to be crucial in transforming agriculture and hence the well-being of Ugandans. The goal of the agro-industrialization program is to increase commercialization and competitiveness of agriculture production and agro-processing. The agro-industrialization program is a great opportunity for Uganda in increasing household incomes and improving quality of life. Unlike in the previous national development plans, the implementation of the NDP-3 and therefore the agro-industrialization program that forms the bedrock for its success is being undertaken through a program approach because it cuts across several sectors like water and environment, trade and local government. The agriculture sector is mainly a private sector led. The role of government is to create an enabling environment. The role of government is to provide the policy and regulatory. So there is a realization from the farmers and the bigger private sector that increased production, increased and improved production will be that one driven by technology. There is a lot of investment from the side of government and the private sector in irrigation support, both large scale and on farm for smallholder farmers. Uh, there's a lot of investment in processing equipment. Government has substantially given out a lot of milk coolers. Gone are the days when farmers would, would only produce milk for drinking and for their calves. The issue now is, 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 not, is not milk handling infrastructure. The issue now is about price, uh, which also speaks to another level of agro-industrialization, the need for processing, because we continue to see more markets opening up for, for, for pasteurized milk, which has a longer shelf life. So it's, it's really all, whether you go east or west, the base is the agro-industrialization. It enables every stage of the sector. We have huge agricultural production. So if we added just a bit of technology into our agriculture, if we improved the technology of agriculture, uh, we shall be able to resolve a lot of prob problems. And since we are at the cusp of the takeoff stage, I believe agriculture will provide the final push that will give us, drive us to the becoming a first world. Uh, being a middle income, causing social economic transformation and eventually becoming a first world country. The government of Uganda adopted the program approach to promote coordinated efforts to achieve of its development objectives. 20 programs have been identified and designed to deliver the required results. Under the program approach, the Ministry of Agriculture, and Mall Industry and Fisheries takes the lead in implementing the agro-industrialization program. It nonetheless works in liaison with other government MDAs, which include the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Commerce, the Ministry of Local Government, and the Ministry of Water and Environment to ensure the implementation of complementary interventions necessary for achieving the objectives of the program. The Ministry of Trade, 
industry and cooperatives and its agencies are crucial in regards to the establishment of storage and marketing infrastructure, warehouses, cold stores and physical markets, negotiation for access to regional markets under Comesa and ESC, promotion of compliance to quality international standards and promotion of value addition and agro-processing. What we've mainly been doing is to help our exporters through UNBS again ensure that the quality we're exporting is fit for purpose, fit for the European market, fit for the Agoa market, which is America, and really fit for the, for across the Atlantic. So once these products go, and uh, also to put them on the irreciting systems, put them on, ba basically to make their ease of doing business easier, especially when they are going abroad. So we also contact our counterparts through the foreign affairs in other countries to make it easy for them to ship their goods to those other countries and they and and, and all these barriers non, especially non-tariff barriers are handled uh, on the bo across the borders of each of the countries that have signed up to the protocols of uh, both Comesa East Africa and then of course across Africa the Ministry of Local Government is responsible for the development of agriculture, market infrastructure and delivery of agriculture extension services to the grassroots. This is being undertaken through the parish development model. It is the vehicle for the operationalization of the agro-industrialization program among the local and grassroots communities. Throughout the country, the Ministry of Local Government has carried out a nationwide recruitment drive to fill up the vacancies in parishes which did not have chiefs to mourn them. The majority of the subsistence households, in fact 68% of the subsistence households are engaged in agriculture-related commodities. So agro-industrialization program uh, will... Uh, heavily steer the implementation of the parish uh, development model. Through the programmatic approach, the Ministry of Water and Environment is responsible for developing and putting in place the infrastructure to increase access to water for production. This has seen a number of valley dams, valley tanks, as well as major and medium and small-scale irrigation programs implemented across the country. We continue to uh, support uh, irrigation medium to large scale uh, as, as a strategy. So we continue to construct more irrigation schemes as a strategy. The other one is that we continue to construct uh, improved storage. You know, because of climate change, when you don't have uh, sufficient storage, then you, 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 are, you, you, you are irrigated uh, or, or your agricultural sector will be susceptible to shocks if you don't have stored water. So we continue to create storage, cumulative storage for various uses, irrigation, livestock watering and, and fish farming. And the third one, which is also key, is that as a strategy is to support sustainable management of irrigated infrastructure or water for production infrastructure, so to speak as a strategy uh, to achieve uh, the objectives of uh, agro-industrialization program. So they are three-pronged. An important stakeholder in the successful implementation of agro-industrialization program is the private sector and its investments. The agro-industrialization program provides for detailed interventions along the agriculture value chains. It has six key objectives, namely increasing agriculture production and productivity, improving post-harvest handling and storage of agricultural products, increasing agro-processing and value addition, increasing market access and competitiveness of agricultural products in domestic and international markets, increasing the mobilization, access and utilization of agricultural finance, strengthening agriculture sector institutional capacities for agro-industrialization. For the agro-industrialization program to succeed and make meaningful impact on the population, research and development are key and government is doing and investing in research into priority and strategic commodities. Major strides are already beginning to be felt in a number of value chains thanks to the work that has been done to improve production and productivity. 
This has been through research and development of pest and disease resistant varieties, which are also higher yielding. It has also entailed better pre- and post-harvest handling methods and technologies. It has also entailed the development of numerous value chains, processing, as well as marketing and branding. Other interventions are being pursued in order to ensure technology generation and uptake among farmers. This has entailed a high level of coordination and harmonization of interventions in the National Agriculture Research System, the Agricultural Education System, the National Agriculture Extension System, and the Input Supply System. Agriculture research and technology development have been strengthened. This in order to improve the capacity of the National Agriculture Research Systems for technology development. It is also to strengthen research linkages with agriculture training institutions. Under this intervention, there are ongoing investments by government in new infrastructure as well as the rehabilitation of old infrastructure for agriculture research. This includes laboratories, offices and technology demonstration and training centers. 17 new laboratories are to be constructed or are in plan to be built. 21 existing laboratories are on course to being rehabilitated. 18 satellite laboratories being built at the National Animal Genetic Research Center and Data Bank Center farms are nearing completion or have been set up. The National Bull Stud and Semen Evaluation Center in Entebbe is currently undergoing rehabilitation, while seven regional and mini liquid nitrogen units will be installed. A lot is going on to ensure that the country has the appropriate research capabilities and infrastructure that will support the development of appropriate technologies and varieties for Ugandan farmers. The ministry is rolling out innovative extension service models including the e-extension, farmer to farmer, nucleus farmer model, speeder model, four acre model to increase farmer access to modern production techniques. These extension services are helping to increase the uptake of new technologies in order to increase production and productivity. There are several other key interventions underway. One of them is strengthening the agriculture extension system. Access to extension and advisory services is a key determinant of technology adoption and uptake by farmers and other stakeholders. Currently, 4,000 positions out of the total required number of 5,000 extension staff have been filled. In the next five years, efforts will be directed at the recruitment of an additional 1,000 extension workers, facilitation of both new and existing extension workers up to parish level. This is to enhance farmer access to agriculture extension services. Strategic partnerships with other government institutions and the private sector are also being leveraged. The government plans to register and accredit private sector extension workers. Access to production inputs is key in production and productivity. This is an area that is still short and plagued by facts. Across the country, the use of traditional farm methods is still prevalent countrywide. This has limited agriculture productivity potential. Efforts are now beginning to be seen and realized in the provision and distribution of good quality critical farm inputs to farmers in order to boost production and productivity. Indeed, there have been efforts to scale up the supplies in order to ensure sustainable production capacity, which is crucial for the agro-industry program. In strengthening the agriculture inputs markets and distribution systems, the aim is to ensure adherence to quality standards and grades. This is being done by strengthening the agriculture inputs markets and distribution systems to adhere to quality standards and grades. The focus is on the public and private input supply systems, starting with what have been designated as priority and strategic commodities. Other measures include strengthening inspection, certification and regulation of inputs developing and enforcing regulations under the Plant and Varieties Protection Act, improved enforcement of regulations against counterfeit agrochemicals, operationalizing Namalede Analytical Diagnostic Laboratories to undertake pesticide analysis, fertilizer analysis, biology, nematology, 
entomology, and other specialized functions. Operationalizing the National Animal Disease and Diagnostic Center with equipment and consumables. And finally, establishing animal holding grounds and quarantine stations at border posts as well as animal checkpoints along the major stock routes. Given the effects of climate change and increasing instances of adverse weather events that can impact greatly on agriculture, one of the critical interventions are the investments that have been made and are being made to increase access and use of water for agriculture production. This is one way the continued threat of negative climate change impacts are being addressed. Fortunately, Uganda has an abundance of water resources that can be harnessed for agriculture production in order to support all year agriculture production. Besides impacts on agriculture production, the yields of livestock in Uganda remains low, registering only about 30% of biological potential. This is due to reduced soil fertility and moisture stress. Thus, this is one of the key aspects to be addressed in the next five years. Investments in several irrigation schemes across the country are now complete or nearing completion. Alongside this is the development of micro and small-scale irrigation systems for smallholder farmers outside conventional irrigation schemes. They are either powered by solar, gasoline, grid or gravity. The Ministry of Water and Environment is keenly developing infrastructure and services for bulk water storage and transfer including this has entailed development and installation of water abstraction systems, transmission mains, water pumping systems, storage tanks, and water distribution networks. For the livestock sector, capacity to provide water for livestock among farming communities has been increased through digging or drilling of boreholes. It has also entailed the construction of water dams and construction of valley tanks. Another crucial intervention is to introduce and encourage increased access to and use of agriculture mechanization. Mechanized agriculture in primary production and post-harvest handling is still low. The reason is the high costs of mechanization and limited awareness of the scope of mechanized agriculture among the rural population. This low access and use reduces efficiency and productivity. To increase access and the use of mechanization in agriculture, government has continuously established appropriate public and private financing options for agricultural mechanization. The focus is mainly on acquisition and utilization of agricultural mechanization technologies, mechanical removal of the mass water weed in all major water bodies, setting up of communal water ponds, support of large-scale cultivation and growing by providing agricultural machinery and equipment to large-scale farms, organization of tractor hire services across the country. Under the mechanization program, government is expanding and equipping regional agricultural mechanization and service centers. Government is also supporting the training of tractor and other agriculture machinery operators and artisans Namalere National Referral Agriculture Mechanization Center is also under rehabilitation, equipment and retooling. There are also numerous interventions to improve the low use of mechanization in primary production and post-harvest handling. This is due to the high costs of mechanization and limited awareness of the scope of mechanized agriculture among the rural population. Government has undertaken to increase access and use of mechanization in agriculture by establishing appropriate public and private financing options for agricultural mechanization. Given the rapid technology shifts and their advantages, another key intervention are the efforts to increase access and use of digital technologies in agriculture. This is for disease diagnosis, access to information, inputs, markets and finance. Also key is the intervention in the form of better systems for management of pests, vectors and diseases. Finally, increase investments in local agriculture drugs manufacture and distribution. Across the agriculture production landscape, these interventions are starting to pay off. 
For example, the export promotion value chain has had dramatic impacts and returns in the last five years and more. Dairy production. One of the most notable achievements of the interventions by the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industries and Fisheries has been the emergence of Uganda as a leading milk producing and exporting country in the region. From a country that could barely produce over 500,000 litres in 1986 and had to import most of the milk and dairy products for its needs, Uganda today produces 2.81 billion litres of milk annually. 2017, we were able to export by value 130 million US dollars. And shortly, two years after that, in 2019, we have 150 million US dollars of, of export. Dairy production has hit major milestones not just in quantities, but crucially in the quality of the milk and its products. This is thanks to improvement in the genetics of local milk producing animals. It is also because livestock farmers now increasingly accept to stock better milk producing breeds. Milk is a highly perishable commodity as such over 2,000 milk cooling plants have been provided for dairy farmers across the country to ensure that milk arrives at the markets or processing plants when fresh. There are now stringent mechanisms in place to check the quality of milk right from the farms where it is produced to the processing plants to ensure that high standards are kept. Two mobile laboratories procured by the Dairy Development Authority ensure that the commodity is suitable for consumption. Because of the support and encouragement by government, the dairy subsector has attracted many local and foreign investors who have set up milk processing facilities and factories churning out various milk products. These have gone a long way in terms of value addition. With production at 2.81 billion liters annually and local consumption at only 800 million liters annually, this is very important in sucking up the excess milk that would otherwise have gone to waste. No wonder Uganda has now emerged as the leading exporter of high-quality milk and milk products in the sub-region. Nonetheless, the achievements in milk production and the development of value addition facilities that were non-existent comes with its challenges. A critical one is what to do with the surplus milk for now. This brings into question issues of sustainability in terms of locally trained human resource along the value chain and reliable markets for the surplus milk. You cannot have 2.7 billion liters of milk and we have not built capacity in milk technology. There are no milk technologists here. There are no dairy technologists. There are no dairy technicians. So we have to import dairy technologies from Kenya, from India, from Pakistan. As a result, the Dairy Development Authority is in the process of reviving the dairy training school in Entebbe. It is undergoing rehabilitation in preparation to be transformed into an accredited training school. Modern machinery has been procured for the school's training programs. When fully functioning, the benefits will be immense. We are building capacity to harness our resource. We are building capacity to employ our people. We are building our capacity to produce better products, which will have market outside. But there is still a lot to do for the dairy sector. A critical challenge that has to be addressed in the informal nature of the subsector, 70% from milk producers to vendors, traders and transporters are informal in nature. Nonetheless, this presents an opportunity for the development of more value chains in the dairy sector. The growing agro-industrialization and processing space in the country is being powered by the need to find ways of processing the huge amounts of commodities that farmers' endeavors are producing. For example, the volume of coffee produced in Uganda keeps climbing. 
The volume of coffee produced increased from 7.75 million 60 kilogram bags in financial year 2019-2020 to 8.6 million 60 kilogram bags in financial year 2020-2021. This was an increase of 4% and was mainly attributed to newly planted coffee, which started yielding results. Favorable weather conditions also played a crucial part. Today, Uganda is among the big league coffee producers globally, with orders growing in important markets abroad. A total of 6.8 million 60 kilogram bags of coffee were exported valued at 559 million US dollars by the 30th June 2021. In the same period in 2020, Uganda exported 5 0.12 million 60 kilogram bags of coffee exported valued at 496 million US dollars. This was an increase of 19% in quantity and 13% in value, respectively. This huge growth in volumes is due to the efforts by the Uganda Coffee Development Authority, working jointly with the National Agriculture Research Organization. They have introduced new disease-resistant and higher-yielding coffee varieties to farmers. The increase in yields was also possible due to the acceptance by coffee farmers to change from the older and less yielding varieties that were prone to diseases and replace them with new coffee types. Kakoza Noarin Nakanwaji is a farmer and nursery operator in Mubende district. She appreciates the CWDR series Robusta Coffee Seedlings that UCDA has distributed to farmers. Farmers can begin to harvest from seven months onwards. From her nursery, Noreen produces 100,000 seedlings from her one and a half acre allotment per year. It is a business that earns her 150 million shillings per year. She began this particular mother garden in 2018, from which she produces the seedlings for sale to farmers. Each seedling is 1,500. Whether I'm selling to UCDA or to individuals. So that is the income on my side. Two farmers come and get seedlings. Because if there are no seedlings, of course, we cannot have coffee in Uganda. So this is the first stage of coffee pla farming anyway, the first stage. So I'm doing it as a business because I earn money. As I told you, if I harvest like 100,000 a season, if you multiply by 1,500, how much money is that one? 150 million. So that is an income on my side. The business has spawned off other sources of employment. For example, women in the area who do planting and potting of her plants. It is a big chain that includes truck drivers that supply soil, those who supply the ports, the polythene sheeting that make the business viable, timber for the sheds. She also set up a model farm adjacent her nursery to further persuade farmers to make the switch. CWDR was introduced to address the problem of coffee wilt, which had devastated farmer coffee shambles. Kasule Moses is a prominent coffee farmer in Kayunga village near Mubende, who has also taken to the new coffee varieties. He was previously a coffee trader and process before he settled down to coffee farming for the last 32 years. He has now discovered another value chain in coffee, seedlings production, and has now set up a nursery to kickstart this revenue stream. Certainly, the huge volumes of coffee production are helping to sustain exports and to cement Uganda as an exporter of high-quality robusta coffee. The UCDA has helped promote and ensure high standards of production right from the garden and post-harvest handling to the processing and exporting companies like Yugakov. As the Ministry of Agriculture is developing disease-resistant and high-yielding coffee varieties and supporting farmers to adopt them, it is also encouraging specialty coffee production. This is a growing global market niche with very high returns. Many farmers have now taken to eat well knowing the strict high standards that are required to survive in the business. One of the farmers engaged in specialty coffee production is Banabas Talemoa Buanyaga 
on his 300-acre coffee farm in Ibanda district. Quality controls are a must from the chambers through post-harvest handling and processing for eventual export. Image Coffee, as the farm is known, also has a processing plant on site with a capacity of 5 tons per hour, enough to consume the entire Ibanda coffee production. Taremwa had abandoned his coffee farm but revived it recently when specialty coffee markets began to gain currency and after encouragements with the development of new high yielding and disease resistant varieties. Organic cotton being spun into quality yarn at a cotton apparel manufacturing business in Bukorobi, Kampala. Fine Spiners does not just spin raw cotton into yarn. The business adds value through various value chains, spinning off more income and foreign exchange revenues from Uganda's organic cotton. The end product is high-quality t-shirts for export to lucrative markets in Europe and the United States of America, plus branded shirts for the local market. This is a fully vertically integrated uh, textile business which spans cotton ginning all the way to uh, producing apparel which is exported primarily to Europe. So it's quite a unique value proposition that exists in fine spinners which is not replicated in many parts of the world because the textile value chain is a very fragmented and broken value chain. So to have everything under one roof, the amount of value addition that uh, fine spinners does is up to 20 times from seed cotton and 15 times from uh, cotton lint. So it's an incredible amount of value captured here within Uganda. And um, this factory primarily does uh, knits, wovens, and is largely in the full 100% cotton value chain. 10% of the 150,000 to 200,000 bales of cotton produced in Uganda, which would otherwise have been exported in raw form. Through its value addition activities, Fine Spiners has made available 1,600 jobs for young Ugandans while also guaranteeing a steady market for the cotton produced for 16,000 farmers in eastern Uganda and Kasese district. Beef production is one of the major commodities that the government is intent on developing. The purpose is both for the export market and domestic consumption and attainment of national nutritional goals. Under the agro-industrialization program, the goal is to improve beef and dairy production while tackling the common disease and pests. A major key to improved beef and dairy production is improvement of the genetics of the animals in the country. The government has ensured that good quality breeding stock are available for the breeding purposes at the Bull Start facility at the National Animal Genetic Resource Center and Data Bank in Entebbe. A lot is being done in, uh, under the Na uh, National Agricultural Genetic Resource Center and Data Bank, which you know is our agency that is dealing with, with that. So there we are trying to bring in, of course, new technologies to give people the genetics they want, either through AI and birth transfer. We already have the regional gene bank. Uh, it is uh, located within here in Uganda, here in Entebbe. So, and uh, many farmers are already doing their own breeding. Besides the National Bull Start, the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries also operates 12 stock farms and animal research stations. Most are still undergoing rehabilitation, but their purpose is to provide active breeding and stocking programs for beef and milk animals, pigs, goats, sheep and poultry. Some of the stations whose rehabilitation and renovation has been completed include Lusenke in Kayunga district and Kasolwe in Kamuli district. Farmers in the surrounding localities can easily access improved breeding stocks. But besides this, these stations have community artificial insemination outreach programs which are helping farmers to acquire better quality milk and beef producing cattle. Breeding programs have also attracted private sector players. It is a viable business strand with a huge potential to earn those participating substantial income and helping meet local demand for good quality animals. 
the Kato Corridor district of Kiruhura in western Uganda. A unique enterprise is taking place here with the active support and encouragement by government. Started Rainbow Ranches uh, with an objective of uh, breeding different cattle breeds. Reason being, uh, trying to get an animal which fits our conditions. Ranching with the purpose of breeding quality animals for quality beef and milk production. Rainbow Ranchers is one of the ways government is supporting the development of better animal genetics and breeds with the active involvement of private sector. Banabas Tarimabu Anyaga's goal is to produce animals that will be beneficial to farmers' conditions and environment. High priority is placed on the health of the animals because without that, production of good quality beef and milk would not be guaranteed. The target on this farm are dual-purpose animals for beef and milk production. The farm has crossbred and cole and fresian animals and is now into other varieties. Rainbow Ranchers complements the efforts of government breeding programs at the National Animal Genetics Research Center and Data Bank and its breeding centers spread across the country. Why the emphasis on dual-purpose animals? They are a good value chain. When alive, they give milk. When they stop providing milk, they can be slaughtered for beef. There is a need, and this should be a must for every farmer, to breed a dual purpose animal, an animal that will provide for both, which will be, which can give you enough milk, but at the same time it should have beef. So that when you want to sell, you get value for your money. Rainbow Ranchers is a good example of the efforts to encourage large-scale commercial livestock breeding to satisfy local demand. Indeed, as farmers like Tarimoa have learned the hard way, stemming animal diseases and improving animal health are crucial for the development and growth of Uganda's livestock sector. The efforts to improve the breed and genetics of the livestock in the country are taking place hand in hand with efforts to improve animal health. Thus, the government has in place programs to stem some of the biggest threats to animal health in Uganda, such as tick-borne diseases and the deadly foot and mouth disease. The inability to fully control animal diseases is one of the reasons hindering meat exports despite demand abroad and the lucrative prospects that it presents. We have FMD and several other diseases that are trade sensitive. With them, our meat cannot access any lucrative markets anywhere. So globally, with FMD, you cannot trade. In the past five years, a lot of focus has been put on developing locally produced drug alternatives. The main drugs available are caricides. However, the ministry has concentrated efforts on the development and production of animal vaccines. Researchers are in advanced stages of experimenting with the possibility of replacing acaricides with vaccines against the deadly brown ear tick that spreads East Coast fever as well as against the blue and burnt ticks. Common method has been used for controlling these ticks has been um, use of chemicals, acaricides. Yeah, but uh, over time, there has been uh, the ticks have developed resistance to acaricides and even what we call super resistance against all the different molecules of the acaricides. So, so for that reason and other associated problems, for example, the chemicals contaminate the environment, they contaminate the, the food, the milk products and meat products, and even the, the animal also suffers because of the continued use of chemicals on its skin. There are ongoing vaccine trials on calves and animals at the research station. This phase will pave the way for more wide-scale field trials in the community. While acaricides are plagued by drug resistance, researchers have not completely abandoned them. They are making significant progress in developing bioacaricides. The step was prompted by a farmer outcry against ticks and failure of current acaricides on the market. 
uptake resistance to available drugs is due to overfrequent use and underdosing by farmers in a bid to cut costs. With the development of these and more drugs, the country stands to save 3.8 trillion shillings that is spent annually in animal drug imports. Hopefully, with guaranteed better animal health, Uganda will possibly one day progress to become a leading meat exporter. With diseases and quarantines, livestock farmers can't trade.